My name is Jamie David, and I'm excited to introduce my first online class for Bernina of America, the college-ruled iPad Pocket. This project will feature the L220 cover and chain stitch machine. Using the nostalgic motif of notebook paper, we will utilize the chain stitch to create a decorative effect. This simple project also incorporates a zipper. The L220 is a cover stitch machine. A cover stitch is a common hem finish for active wear and t-shirts. The L220 has three needle options. You can choose to use all three or any combination of two needles. This will give you the flexibility of a narrow or wide cover stitch hem. If you choose one needle, it is called a chain stitch. The chain stitch has many uses. It is good for seaming. It is secure but easy to remove and is often used for temporary basting of garments and home deck items. It provides a nice seam in netting textiles like tulle shown in this cute skirt made by my friend Lorene at Sew It Up in Hearst, Texas. It also provides a sturdy seam in denim and can be found in the construction of jeans. Another great way to use the stitch is to take advantage of the looper eye and use thicker decorative threads. You can even use elastic thread in your looper to create a shirring effect. The supplies that you will need for this project are fabric, off-white fabric, 11 inches by 42 inches, a piece of cotton polyester batting, 11 inches by 22 inches, serger thread in either eggshell color or cream. I used Orafil Cotton Mako 12 weight decorative thread in salmon color and very light delft, a 14 to 18 inch polyester zipper, tweezers, snips, a marking pin that's air erasable, your rotary cutting supplies, rotary cutter, mat and ruler, clover wonder clips, and a tapestry needle. Before we begin, I want to walk you through threading your L220 for a chain stitch. Begin by raising and removing the presser foot. Just like our sewing machines, when the presser foot is raised, the tension discs are open and the machine is ready to be threaded. With experience, you may find that you don't have to remove the foot, but for learning, it will give you better visibility to remove it. Using the needle holder brush tool, remove the left and middle needles. Be sure to tighten the screw slightly once removing the needle so that it doesn't wiggle out when you begin sewing. There is an optional chain stitch foot that can be purchased for this machine. This foot provides a perfect view of the work area at all times. However, if you use this foot, you must only use the left needle for the chain stitch. I will be using the standard cover stitch foot that comes with the machine for this project. Place your eggshell colored serger thread on the thread stand for the right needle at the back row in the far right. Raise the thread stand to the highest position and bring the thread from the spool into the guides indicated at the appropriate color, blue for the right needle. Make an S-shaped loop around the thread guide bar and bring the thread around the tension dial and follow the blue marks through the guides, take up lever and needle clamp. Thread the right needle from the front to the back. At this point, you can put the presser foot back on and lay the thread over the presser foot. Check that your needle tension is set at four. Now let's thread the looper. Open the cloth tray at the side of the machine and your looper cover. We will use the decorative orofill thread in the looper, starting with the blue color. You may need to remove the anti-vibration cone if it is on your spool holder pin. It is also a good idea to use a spool cap if your spool of thread is small. Bring the thread from the spool and into the thread guide. The thread then comes straight back down to a guide at the back of the machine before going around the side of the machine and into the tension disc. For this project, I lowered the tension to low to better accommodate the thicker thread. Once around the tension disc, follow the diagram and place the thread into all the purple marked guides. You may find it helpful to use tweezers for this. To thread the looper coil, use tweezers and insert the thread from the left to the right. You may adjust the coil to an ideal position by turning the hand wheel. Next, thread the looper. Pinch the white tab and pull the looper down to easily access the looper for threading. Thread the looper from the back left position, then around into the front position. Raise the looper back into the sewing position. Turn the hand wheel so that the looper is back on the looper side of the door and leave approximately a four inch thread tail to begin. Lastly, check your stitch settings. The knobs are on the outside of the machine on the right hand side. 
Set your stitch length to 3 to 3.5 and the differential feed to in or neutral. Although we will not need to worry so much about securing our stitches for this project, I did want to share with you how to do it. There are some great videos on Bernina.com that clearly illustrate this as well, but this is a common question for this machine. Stop stitching at the end of the fabric. Unlike our sergers, you want to have fabric underneath the needle when you end a cover or chain stitch. Turn the hand wheel so that the needles are in the highest position and raise the presser foot. Using tweezers or snips, slide them over the fabric and under the presser foot, pulling the thread to the left. Cut the needle thread, making sure to leave a long enough tail that it won't come unthreaded. And remove the fabric by pulling it to the back left. Then you can trim the looper thread. You will notice that as you pull this out, you will complete the entire stitch, leaving behind only one needle thread and the looper thread to start your next stitch. To completely secure the stitch, you can use the looper thread to pull the needle thread to the back side of the finished work and tie the threads together. Because we are using this as a decorative element and stitches will be secured in our side seams, there's no reason for us to worry with securing this many stitches for our project. Thanks for sticking with me. I hope you learned some helpful threading hints. Now we're ready to make our project. You will first need to prepare a quilt sandwich. Cut a piece of off-white fabric, 11 inches by the width of fabric, approximately 42 to 45 inches, and a piece of batting, 11 inches by 22 inches. Fold the fabric in half and press a crease. Open the folded fabric and place the batting in the middle of the folded fabric. You can use a spray basting if you wish, but the piece is small enough that it is easy to manage without basting. Trim the selvage or the open edge of the quilt sandwich. Using an erasable fabric marker, mark a line three inches from the edge of each short end. These will be our starting marks. Now you are ready to sew the decorative chain stitch rows. It is always a good idea to practice on a scrap material before diving into your project. Line up the drawn line with the line indicated on the presser foot for the right needle. It is a good habit to start with the needle down in the fabric. You can begin to sew your first row. Stop sewing at the end of the fabric and raise the needle to the highest position. Pull the fabric back, leaving an unbroken thread tail, and begin sewing the next row of stitching on the opposite side. It is easiest to sew these rows in pairs. You will notice the chain stitch appears on the bottom or looper side of the fabric. The top looks like the straight stitch that you would get from a regular sewing machine. For this project, the looper side is the focus and uses a decorative element. Continue sewing the chain stitch rows in pairs by following the side of the presser foot as your guide. It is easiest to work with the fabric by rolling it up to move it past the right side of the presser foot. You may want to sew a few rows and then stop to tidy up the fabric by giving it a good press and trimming some of your thread tails. Don't worry if your lines are not perfectly straight. This will add to the character of your project. Make sure that there are the same number of lines on each side of the pocket when you are finished. You will have approximately 16 to 17 rows. It is normal for the fabric to shift a little as you sew. We will be trimming this down to a smaller size. You may also try lowering the presser foot pressure to reduce the amount of shifting. Once you have finished sewing your rows of blue lines, give the fabric a good press. You will likely have a few wrinkles, but that's okay. Use your rotary cutter and ruler to trim the edges to a finished size of 10 by 21. This is a good time to also look at your stitches and free any thread tails that may have gotten sewn into the next row of stitching. Now that the fabric is tidied up, we can sew our final decorative stitch. First change the looper thread from blue to salmon. You may do this easily by tying the thread tails together. With the presser foot raised, pull the threads from the stitch plate area until the salmon color thread is through the machine. Trim and you are ready to begin. Mark your vertical line two and a half inches from one long side. Remember to mark and sew with the decorative side face down. When finished, trim the thread tails. You will need a sewing machine or a serger to finish assembling the iPad pocket. I used a serger to construct my pocket. I set the machine to a three thread overlock with the following settings. Right needle tension of four, upper and lower looper tension of four, rolled hem lever pushed forward, cutting width of six, stitch length of 2.5, and differential feed set at neutral.
You should test your stitch on a scrap before sewing the project. You may need to tweak your settings for your machine. We will begin by installing the zipper along the short sides of the fabric. This will become the top of the pocket. Use a long enough zipper that you will not accidentally sew through the metal zipper stops. Place the zipper, right sides together, along one short edge. Use Wonder Clips to hold the zipper in place. Wonder Clips are great for serger sewing because unlike pins, you will not accidentally sew over them or run into them with your serger blade. Sew the zipper with a three thread overlock. Repeat this process on the opposite side. You may find that it is easier to install the zipper when it is opened up. Just make sure that you clip it in place so the zipper teeth match from side to side. With the zipper partially open and the zipper pull in between the side seams of the pocket, sew the side seams. It is easiest to start on the folded edge and end at the zipper. I trimmed off very little of fabric to maximize the size of my pocket. If you are using a sewing machine, I would sew with a quarter inch seam allowance and finish the edge with a zigzag stitch. Secure your thread tails by using a tapestry needle to pull the thread tails into the serge seam. Turn the pocket right side out through the zipper opening and the finished size will be approximately 8.5 inches by 10.5. Thank you for making this fun and functional iPad pocket with me. I hope you enjoyed learning a new way to use the L220. I look forward to sharing more in inspiration and information about the Bernina Overlocker machines with you.